what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the things I've been doing here to synthesize environments for VR. Okay? Remember when we saw the, um, the drone image? We saw that image that filled the whole screen that had this 360 degree view of the world. Well, the reason that that was really cool is you can take and wrap that around someone in VR and they're, 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 you're seeing wrapped in it. So what I've been learning how to do is how to create my own environment, my own maps such that they are meant to be uh, wrapped around a VR scene and to synthesize these things in high dynamic range, which means that they can be used for image-based lighting using Unity 5's new global illumination and lighting. Uh, so they're not just, I'm not synthesizing JPEGs, I'm synthesizing .HDR radiance 128-bit images that are suitable for lighting the scene. And I was inspired by this little guy. Have you ever see this uh, bound in this short? It's a short by Pixar from about seven or eight years ago that I always loved it and from a technical standpoint. What I like about this is you can learn a lot about how they're generating this believable set. And you'll see they've got this central mesh there, this pedestal with, with about this sheet that would dance on this pair. And they have meshes all around it and the whole animation, they're orbiting around this. But to really kind of sell the shot, you'll notice that back here, they've got an, a, a spherical mat all the way around the outside with distant mountains that are just painted on, and clouds that are painted on, but that move. And they've got another layer, this green mountain range here, that is also, it's not 3D, it's just a cutout. But it moves with parallax relative to the, out, to the background as the camera orbits around. And the net result is it really feels like you're in a place. And, and I think that uh, it's good to remember that we have more than just stereo separation to work with, but we have the effects of parallax to work with in VR. So I'm going to show how I, real quick, how I um, Im imitate some of this stuff. So I'm just going to go real quick. Ask, anyone can ask questions as I go, too. So first thing I do is I open up Cinema 4D. And I've got a, uh, a world here, but you can't see anything in it because there is no light. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my sky material, and you'll see how I build a sky. First thing I have is a gradient, which is just a color gradient that when I apply it to the sky, I get this thing's already looking like a, a hemispheric image of a sky. And if I go on and do a couple little things to it, I'll add a layer to it of noise, and now I've got clouds and another layer of noise. Now I got more clouds. Now, why is this cool? Well, it's a nice image there, but you can't use that image in VR unless you put in your scene a mirror ball I put a chrome sphere virtually in the scene. Now what I can do is I can bake the texture of that sphere out, and what I get in Photoshop is an equirectangular HDR 128-bit image that I can bring into Unity. Now when I open up Unity, you'll see I've got that sky in there already. Now, we, this, is the, this is the new Unity, uh, Unity 5 lighting, and I'm gonna show you some really cool things we can do. So just by bringing that sky in, We've already got a scene that looks like it's lit by that particular sky. We just created that from scratch, but we can do better. First off, I can turn on the sun. Now, look down here at the bottom. Look at that, what, what kind of look we get from this, from this sunlight in Unity 5. It starts to look really cool, but we can do better than that. I'm going to turn on something called a reflection probe. Now our reflection probe captures local reflections. Watch the cube. Now, now look at that. Now we've got local reflections in there of all of the um, of all the pillars and of that sky that we just created. And we're starting to create something that looks like a place that we that looks like a real place. Now we can do better than that though. Let's turn on these colored lights. Now look at that interaction of these lights in here that you would not have gotten in Unity 4. We've got real-time global illumination where these lights are scattering around the scene, interacting with the image-based lighting all in real time. Now, what else we can do is in Cinema 4D, I learned that I can go back in here. Remember we had those mountains in the background in that Pixar animation? So we can do something similar in here. So I can actually create a whole ring of mountains and then by selectively compositing them, I can render out a map that has only those mountains in it with alpha. So I've got translucency there. So now if I turn that on here, we're going to turn on 
the first one, and there's a layer of mountains, and a second one, and then a third one, and this is going to be clouds. And now we're going to go to our lighting, and we're going to turn up the ambient GI a little bit. <laughs> and what you've got is notice when we, well, let me just, let me just hit play. Now what we've got is notice the parallax out there. And we've got a pretty cool looking environment that we just synthesized completely from scratch and made a complete set out of it. That's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you notice a couple other things I'm going to show is you'll notice there's some things that really sell this shot. I'm learning the power of, of uh, image effects. So we're doing this all in full HDR linear color space. And also, we've got things like true object motion blur using amplified motion. Look at that motion blur. Do you know that Ed Catmull from Pixar said the one thing he would never, ever do is make an animated motion picture without motion blur? And they put motion blur in Toy Story from the beginnings. It's so important. And so, ain't that just some pretty lighting in there? Yeah. <laughs> this is Unity's lighting. Check this out. And I made this whole thing in about in one day, one and a half days. The only thing I didn't show was modeling the um, environment here, but that took an hour in Cinema 4D. Just hour. But we've also got PBR-based materials now in here. So uh, we've got, using Unity's new standard shader, you can adjust the metallic or non-metallic nature of surfaces. And there's a lot more we can talk about it, you know, after this. But I think this is a big step up from Unity 4. <laughs> and I'm really excited about Unity 5 and what we can do with it. That's it. <laughs> Any questions? And this is a new uh, mode for, our, for my game zone that we're working on, the boss mode we're working on. Can you just quick show me the, how did you get the clouds to move? Oh yeah, the, the, the clouds, see really all we've got here is if we unmaximize here, what we've got here, see there's, a, there's, there's some, there's compositing going on. Those clouds, that is just a, a sphere with a texture that has only those clouds. And how do I get it to move? I put on I put on it on my inspector. I have a little script that I use on all sorts of things called steady spin that spins it by a certain rate, one degree per second. And so what's great about this, that's one draw call for all those clouds and not 100 draw calls. And you know what? You really can't tell that they're not 3D too much. And, and you, we, I could even go further and composite them 3D, but you don't need to. You don't need to. And so this will run on mobile, probably. That's more yeah. performant. Because yeah. this is all baked. This is all baked out. The global so, illumination. Uh, I, I know because it's, I'm not sure. I, I, I have seen demos of the Unity 5 GI on, um, on mobile. Uh, another thing this is uh, demonstrating is what's called deferred lighting. This is linear HDR deferred lighting. And it doesn't default to deferred. If you don't do deferred lighting, you're not going to get this interplay of all these pixel-based lights. And it's a little more expensive, but here on this one, I'm getting on here. Let's see what frames per second I'm getting on this right now. I'm not, this is not old, as image effects and everything. We're getting 100, 143 frames per second on a, G, on a 780, two generations old. So this is well within the range of doable for VR, and this is what we got in Unity now. So Unreal's cool, Unreal UV4 is cool, but Unity's catching up. I'm new to the, the, the VR 3D stuff. What's the 780? Is it NVIDIA? This is an NVIDIA 780, which was the most powerful mobile GPU I could get when I got this 18, year, 18 months ago or two months ago. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's an SLI, but you're just running one car. Yes, it's SLI, but I disable SLI for the purpose of VR because uh, SLI introduces latency. Except maybe it does not now because NVIDIA just released new drivers with the 07 runtime that have a new video card layer mode for doing SLI that might make it work now. So SLI, is that like combine two cards together? Yeah. Do you have two cards in there? I do, but I keep one of them disabled. So you just have one of your cards running, you get 120 frames a second. Right now, 130, 130 frames per second with a two-year-old card. So this would get this gets six or 900 frames per second on my 980. Oh. <laughs> you know, oh wait, you have a 980 also? 980 Ti at home. Oh. oh. This is for, for demo. So. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? So the motion blur is just is attached to the camera, right? It is. It's an awesome effect called Amplify Motion that they do a really great job. It's not just a blur on the image. They take into account the actual objects and their vectors and blur it properly. It's that the motion, the Amplify sound is great. that would run on mobile? Uh, I'm not sure. Probably not. Probably. No, image effects, forget yeah. mobile. That's why I'm focusing yeah, away from mobile right now, because you can't pull this yeah. really cool <laughs> stuff on mobile, you know? Yeah. Anything else? All right.
Cool. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs>